Good morning, everybody. Good morning and, and a warm welcome to our workshop on what I think is a really exciting development in hand hygiene technology. Um, I'm so pleased we have uh, so many people here to engage in the workshop. Um, there'll be plenty of time for your views and your questions later on as we go through. My name is John Otter. I'm the Director of Infection Control at Guy's and St. Thomas's in London. I'm also an honorary senior lecturer at Imperial College London. Um, my role is to facilitate this workshop today. So if it all falls apart, then it's entirely my fault. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Sajinda to kick us off and to introduce herself and then um, give us a, few, uh, a bit of an introduction. Thank you, John. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, so my name is Sajinda Luthra. I am the Chief Innovations Officer and also one of the founding directors of Primo. I did give a keynote speech yesterday, um, but obviously maybe not everyone was here today, uh, yesterday. So what I'm going to do, in fact, is give a brief summary of Primal skin protection today. So apologies to those who saw some of these slides yesterday, but I thought it was important to go through the product first. So Primal uh, skin protection is a revolutionary skin product. It has been developed to improve hand hygiene. Okay, so briefly, I'm just going to go through hand hygiene and the challenges that we face, evolution of hand hygiene through primal skin protection, and then just some key results that we have reported um, out yesterday, but these are going to be the, 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 the key features that I'm going to touch on today. So, hand hygiene has been regarded as a cornerstone for preventing... Uh, for, as a cornerstone of infection prevention, pre prevention, and it's one of the most effective ways of reducing transmission of pathogens and thereby by hospital-acquired infections. The WHO guidelines, as well as the NHS guidelines, highly recommend the use of soap and water, and then also um, hand, hand sanitizers, especially alcohol-based hand sanitizers for the effective maintenance of hand hygiene. Although these practices have been in place for many, many years, there is still transmission of pathogens through contaminated hands. And these have the potential to increase HAIs, particularly antibiotic resistance. Due to the stressful environment in most of the healthcare settings, there is a tendency to have low levels of compliance to these practices among healthcare workers, and especially in non-developed countries. This actually can lead to individuals still retaining potentially harmful microorganisms on their hands and therefore contaminate surfaces. As most of us are aware, Hand sanitizers are effective immediately, but they have no residual activity. And this is an issue because there is a potential to have regrowth of bacteria on hands after the application of hand sanitizers. And this is what leads to contaminating surfaces. So we felt that innovation in technology was required to improve hand hygiene. <coughs> So our uh, development in uh, primal skin, tech, uh, skin protection has been uh, an evolution, we feel, in hand hygiene. Uh, primal skin protection has been developed from biointeractions, trident, enhanced antimicrobial technology. This technology is well established. We have been using this technology on for coating class three medical devices for over 30 years. So we have the biocompatible components as well as the expertise and the know-how to create a formulation that will actually be uh, applicable for applying on skin surfaces. Primo consists of functionalized non-leaching biocompatible polymer matrix. And on application, it leaves a thin film on the surface of the skin, but that thin film resides on the surface for up to 48 hours, and that's where we get the protection of 48 hours on the surface. 
The technology works through a contact kill mechanism. It disrupts the surface of the microorganisms through electrostatic interactions. And these electrostatic interactions provides a broad spectrum of activity. In, additionally, we have a very fast mode of action. We can actually kill microorganisms within 15 seconds. The combination of non-leaching non components and the contact kill mechanisms has given us very, very high um, microorganism efficacy for a variety of microorganisms, and I'll go through some of that data today. The other unique feature that this technology has is what we refer to as kill on touch. This is the only technology that allows users to <coughs> disinfect surface, surfaces which they come into contact with. And this potentially right, reduces the transmission of pathogens, but also enabling the reduction of HAIs in the long term. We have done extensive testing against multiple microorganisms um, internally and externally against various strains of viruses, various strains of bacteria, including multi-drug resistant bacteria, as well as yeast. We have proven that primal skin protection is superior um, against well-known regularly used hand sanitizers on immediate as well as a residual effect, and some of that work we'll be presenting today. So just key summary of results. I presented a lot more data yesterday, but today due to um, the workshop, we felt that it was good to have a lot of questions and answers, so we, we can go through some of the details later on. But at a high level, we have a very effective product, and through the use of biocompatible materials, it provides this broad spectrum of, act, of activity. We have done various tests and have actually shown using EN standards, which are used to look at um, efficacy against enveloped and non-enveloped viruses, as well as gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, as well as yeast, we were able to achieve five-log <coughs> efficacy. Also, we looked at diff four different strains of multi-drug resistant bacteria, and again, we got very good efficacy, and we achieved this within 15 seconds. The 15-second mode of action provides immediate protection, which is unseen with other alcohol-based regular hand sanitizers. So one of the unique features that I talked about earlier was the 48-hour uh, protection that we uh, get from this product. So I'm just going to go through one of the studies that we've actually conducted on volunteers. Um, so the volunteers, they applied the hand sanitizer or a reference product onto their hands. The hands were then inoculated with E. coli, either at immediate application or after 48-hour application. The graphs on the right-hand side shows clearly that we had significant percentage reduction um, for primal skin protection, which is the blue bar that you can actually see at both immediate and 48 hours, whereas the purple bar, which is the reference product, had effect immediately, but at 48 hours, it had negligible um, reduction. So this clearly proves that Primal provides prolonged protection. <coughs> um, what does this mean? This means that that prolonged protection enhances the personal hand hygiene at a personal level it also helps to improve compliance to hand hygiene standards and thereby enabling reduction in HAIs. So Primo is formulated in a liquid formulation. Um, it's easily applied and remains on the skin even after wearing of gloves, and, but it can be washed off with soap and water. So for the use of the product in the medical area as well as surgical, as a surgical hand disinfectant, we've carried out additional testing. So through the EN15 um, standard, which is specific for hygienic hand rub test, we've got very, very good data, which actually shows that primal skin protection had much, much greater efficacy compared to a reference product. 
We also conducted another EN test, which is specific for surgical hand disinfectants test. And again, we saw significant efficacy against microflora at immediate, <coughs> and it was maintained over three hours. So I'm just going to go to the second unique feature of Primal skin protection, which is the Kilon Touch. We have conducted studies to show how do we actually achieve this Kilon Touch um, um, of protecting surfaces. So what we did, we combined two tests. One was a surface test and one was a hand test. So the method involved um, inoculating a stainless di steel disc uh, with an inoculum and letting it dry. Then the hands of the volunteers were either um, uh, treated with a reference product or with uh, skin protection. After that, the volunteers touched the hands of the discs, and then after that, the amount of inoculum that was actually left on the hands as well as on the disc was measured. And the graph on the slide shows that we were able to maintain, maintain significant, it was significantly more effective Primal, which is the blue bar, on both hands and discs, whereas the reference product, which is the purple bar, had insignificant um, um, activity, either on hands or discs. So this clearly shows that we have a, a mechanism which allows a person to touch a surface and then they're actually disinfecting that surface. And that is a very unique um, um, feature of a product that we've not seen with any other hand sanitizer. So through these results, and this is just a very brief summary of results that were presented yesterday and that we actually have internally, we have shown that the, our product is superior to regular standards hand sanitizers on the market today. In addition to the results that I've actually gone through, we actually commissioned a study which is the real world in use evaluation which was conducted by Perfectus Biomed and Dr. Kerry Ann Kite is going to present that data today. So lastly, I would like to thank you and help us to spread protection rather than infection through the use of primal skin protection. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Kerry Ann Kite and I'm here representing Perfectus Biomed. We are a contract research organisation. We specialise in customised microbiology, virology and molecular testing for companies who are developing biocides or medical devices. And that's led us to working with uh, Primal Skin Protect. And I'm going to talk about some of that work that was uh, real world in use hand sanitizer evaluation. Just briefly, I'm going to talk to you today about an introduction to hand hygiene, the evaluation design and laboratory methods, results and uh, conclusions and future works. So in short, why is hand hygiene important from a microbiology point of view? We know that clean hands are what are needed to prevent outbreaks and as well as controlling care-related infections. And alcohol-based hand sanitizers have been doing this and providing this since the late 1990s. And with an ever-growing increased need for antimicrobial stewardship, aids in the development of the prevention of infections or the spread of infections are a welcome development. So that leads to the aim of this study, which was to assess the microflora of hands of the healthcare workers following the application of either primal skin protection or the standard alcohol-based hand, uh, hand sanitizer in a care home setting. So to do this, we needed to uh, find a volunteer site, and that was a care home in Manchester. And you can see here that that's uh, me and someone else from uh, our Perfectus team. And we set up a testing, facility, uh, testing site at the door of the care home so that we could catch the volunteers prior to their uh, routine hand hygiene. We tested 35 healthcare workers, many of these uh, returned, um, uh, were returned over the s several days. 
We tested, of course, both the Primal Skin Protect and the Care Home alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And those samples were collected and analyzed by the Perfectus Biomed team at our labs on the same day. Just in short, just to give you a, a quick uh, brief about the care home, this was both our care home in Ermston, Manchester. They consisted of two floors. They had 20 plus beds with 20 plus residing residents. But the volunteers were actually the staff of the care home. And as I said, we have 35 of them. 30 of those were females and five were males. And they had a range of uh, roles within that care home from HCAs, chefs, cleaners, nurses, and, and even the partners. And um, you can see the majority of them were probably above the ages of 30. So what we wanted to do for this evaluation was look at the immediate effect of the hand sanitizers. And as Sajinda uh, mentioned, we wanted to look at that residual activity. And we wanted to look at the transmission of the microflora to abiotic surfaces. And for this study, we looked at the inside of volunteers' gloves to do that. And so together with uh, Primal Skin Protection, we came up with this evaluation design in a real world environment. But in order to do this and look at these effects, what we needed to do was have a baseline. So we needed to know what, how many microorganisms were on the hands of the volunteers prior to having the hand sanitizer applied. We then needed to sample them immediately. And then we also needed to collect samples from them one hour later and also collect their gloves from them. So you can see this is some pictures of us at the care homes collecting our samples. You can see here, um, this is one of our volunteers. What we would have them do is, before they uh, applied any uh, uh, hand sanitizer, we would get them to rub their fingers into this purple broth that you can see here. This is our recovery broth. That contains a neutralizer. Um, why we use a neutralizer is so that we can um, stop the effects, the continued effects of the hand sanitizer once, they, uh, once we collect the microorganisms in the recovery broth. And so we get them to rub their backs, in the, backs of the fingers and the fronts of their fingers in the recovery broth for approximately 30 seconds. And then with the other hand, we'd also ask them to touch their fingertips onto contact plates. And I'll show you that, those results in a bit. We would then apply the hand sanitizer. So we would apply a known amount, a known volume using a, a syringe. Once their hands were dry, we would also we repeat that sampling so we can look at that immediate effect. We would send them uh, back to the care home. They would perform their duties as normal. They would also be wearing gloves for us. And when they returned an hour later, we would continue that sampling that we said, the, the recovery broth and the contact plate. And then we'd also collect their gloves from them. And you can see us here adding the recovery broth into the inside of the glove. We would uh, rub that around for about 30 seconds and then as sterile as possible. Of course, we're not in the lab here we would recover the, reco uh, re recover the recovery broth, and then that would be our sample. And so this is the, the contact plates. These were incubated for 24 hours. And you can see, so here, uh, these are three um, uh, volunteers. These were all tested with the skin, uh, pr primal skin protection. This is the baseline at the top. And so you can see there is variation between volunteers, um, not only the amount of microorganisms on their hands, but also how many fingers they add, how soft, etc. But what you do see consistently is a reduction in the number of microorganisms. And of course, this data is qualitative and was used just, just to visualize what was going on um, with these samples. Because the majority of our results actually came from that recovery broth. And so we had those four samples. We had the baseline, the immediate effect, the residual or sustained effect, so after that one hour period, and we also had the gloves that we wanted to look at. And I'm just going to very quickly describe how we would quantify um, the number of microorganisms in those samples. Um, so these are agar plates. These contain uh, uh, microorganisms. But you can see if you have a very high number of microorganisms and you plate them, it's very difficult to count the number. If you look at the top left, you couldn't possibly count all of those. So you perform serial dilutions until you get to a number that is uh, countable. And then using um, uh, this 
calculation here, we can work out exactly how many microorganisms were in this sample uh, that we had. And that's what we used for our data analysis. I just wanted to mention quickly here that, um, although you can't see that in, in this picture, that we did see mixed species growth. So we would see yellow, white, big, small colonies. But we actually looked at the total number of colonies for this study. We weren't looking at, at the species here. So the first result that we have is looking at the immediate effect of the hand sanitizer versus the alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And you can see here that there was a 75% reduction in the number of microorganisms compared to that baseline for the immediate effect for the primal skin protection. The alcohol-based hand sanitizer was 54%. There was a significant difference between those with a P uh, less than 0.01. But I think the more interesting of the results, although that is a great reduction, what we do see is one hour later when they return, there's still a 72% reduction in the number of microorganisms. But when we look at the alcohol-based hand sanitizer, that reduction is lost. The microorganisms are starting to uh, grow back. And again, that was significant, uh, uh, less than 0 0.01. The last of the results was looking at the gloves. And what, you, what we found was that between the gloves of the volunteers who had the primal skin protection, they had 84% less microorganisms in, the, in their gloves compared to the alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And that was after the one hour period. And that was uh, significant with a p-value less than 0.001. That's a very nice result. And so just to summarize what I've just said, this is a, a different type of graph that shows the same thing, is you see that we have our baseline. So there was no significant difference between the number of microorganisms on the volunteers for either the, the alcohol-based hand sanitizer or the primal skin protect. What we do observe, though, is a, a significant immediate effect uh, between the two hand sanitizers with uh, approximately an additional 20% effect for the primal skin, uh, primal skin protection. For the sustained effect, we also saw an approximately 45% additional effect <coughs> with the reduction of microorganisms at that one hour time point. And for the gloves, we saw that 84% fewer microorganisms on the inside of the gloves for the Primal Skin Protect versus the alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And so to conclude, we, we saw that the Primal uh, Skin Protection provides a greater antimicrobial efficacy, both at the immediate effect and at the, uh, over the one hour period that we were testing. The gloves worn by the volunteers had a significantly less number of viable microorganisms in the gloves compared to the alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And as a microbiologist, and, uh, we know that having less microorganisms on the hands of healthcare workers um, it could, uh, reduces, the number, uh, uh, reduces the risk of transmission of infectious diseases and is great for infection control. And so just quickly, future works. Um, this study has obviously demonstrated uh, significant results for primal skin protection. And what we would like to do is continue this work in uh, a more clinical setting. So we want to do an evaluation of primal skin protection in a hospital setting. So we're currently looking for any sites, uh, preferably up north near our laboratories. And um, what we would do is we would provide, uh, whilst we're doing this, is obviously minimal disruption to you. Uh, we would also be able to provide you an in-use uh, in assessment of the current hand sanitizers you're using compared to the primal skin protection. And so if you would like any more information, please go to primal at booth 22 or contact the email below. Thank you. <laughs>